broken Nappy hair condition left the sun sand in the car with broad lotion The brown token, the black boy joy meets the permit patty At the Cracker Barrel I'll be choking Asking why they brought these black folk in Well, I was in Wakanda counting dollars with my mama When the colonizers brought upon the drama to the jungle I'm bananas and I'm mannequin, I pull with little Daniel Celebrating can decline upon the Titanic And for ancestors fed into the Atlantic And all y'all walls building high standards This is for the hot landings, hot combos From politicians funding hot condos Keisha lands bottomless mimosos Don't seat you at the table, but they want the photos Wait, I'ma take my pony show to Old Town Rodo And tell them I'm the freshest at the rodeo in all polo That was Seashells by Greg Nice Featuring King Cooley and Alfred Nomad Welcome to the Rise Weekly Review for July 12th to July 19th, 2021 The week began on Monday the 12th with the shooting in South Chicago that left two wounded. Around 9.20 p.m., a 35-year-old man and 20-year-old woman were walking on the 8400 block of Muskegon. According to police, a person began firing shots at the two, striking the man in the neck and the woman in the arm. The man was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center and last pronounced in critical condition. The woman drove herself to Trinity Hospital and was in good condition. Anyone with information on Chicago crimes can contact 311 or leave an anonymous tip at cpdtip.com. On Wednesday, another shooting in South Chicago left a 17-year-old boy in critical condition. According to reports, the boy was outside standing somewhere on 8500 block of South Marquette around 7 p.m. A vehicle rolled up and someone in the vehicle began firing shots at the teen. He was struck in the side of the body in the arm. The teen was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center and last reported in critical condition. Also on Wednesday, a shooting in South Shore left three men wounded. Around 6.30 p.m., the three were on the sidewalk on a 2100 block of East 71st Street when a vehicle pulled up. Someone in the vehicle began firing shots at the group. Two of the men, ages 32 and 64, were struck in the lake. A third man, aged 53, was struck in both the leg and the arm. All three were taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center and last reported in good condition. On Saturday, a shooting in South Shore left a 16-year-old girl wounded. The girl was in the back seat of a vehicle driving on a 7700 block of South Kingston around 8.44 p.m. According to reports, someone began firing shots at the vehicle and the girl was struck in the right leg. She was taken to the University of Chicago Medical Center and last reported in fair condition. Earlier on Saturday, a shooting in Hammond's Woodmar section left a man dead. The currently released information is scarce, but according to reports, 33-year-old Thomas Hill from Chicago was sh- shot either late Friday or early Saturday. Around 1.09 a.m. Saturday, he was pronounced dead in community hospital from multiple gunshot wounds. According to reports, he was involved in an unspecified incident on 173rd and Indianapolis Boulevard. A woman in South Chicago was fatally killed by a vehicle on Thursday. According to reports, around 3.45 a.m., the 31-year-old was on the 8100 block of Houston. It is unclear from reports what exactly happened, but the woman reportedly fell and was crawling in front of the parked car when a male entered the vehicle and began driving forward. The woman was struck by the vehicle and died at the scene from her injuries. The Cook County medical examiners have ruled a death an accident. In other news, a series of new reports in the area around South Chicago and South Shore have sparked renewed concerns over gentrification and what development means for local residents. On Thursday, news was announced that the Chicago Plan Commission supported a zoning change for a new film studio in South Shore. The $60 million development is planned for seven acres at 7731 South Chicago Avenue. The development is backed by investors such as James Reynolds Jr. from Chicago's Loop Capital Markets, who serves as the company's chief financial officer. Loop Loop Capital Markets head of corporate investment banking, Sidney Dillard, is part of the board of the Metropolitan Planning Council. The council, which is made up of corporate philanthropists with real estate ties, has been assisting and funding Eastside environmental leaders to push against area industry to promote riverfront park space and river zoning changes. The film studio development approved by the Planning Commission is set to include 400 new housing units on the, race, on the former site of the Abla Homes Public Housing Project on Roosevelt Road in Racine, along with a potential entertainment district that would include the Avalon Regal Theater at 1641 East 79th Street. In related news during the week, the City of Chicago Planning Commission also approved plans for a new condominium development in South Shore. Developers are proposing to build three new four-story buildings on the site that will house 10 condo units. The units are planned to sell for a price of close to $800,000 when completed. Each is expected to be 2,400 square feet and have three bedrooms. The lakefront views and beach access are expected to be the major draws to the site. Further down in South Chicago, the city in collaboration with area nonprofits and other organizations are planning an art market on Commercial Avenue. The market is being funded by $250,000 from the city's 
Alfresco grant funding to draw people to outdoor public places. The funding is being used to set up an art and performance space, a commercial zone with pop-up markets, and a health and family programming zone. Groups will begin sidewalk uh, painting and setting up starting July 26th, with completion expected around August 14th and official unveiling on the 21st of August. The development that is funded for three years but is expected to be a more permanent addition to commercial will target the area around 89th and commercial near the proposed South by Southwest housing development the city is planning. Public spaces and art projects have long been considered necessary capital investments for gentrification around the country. Chicago has historically used them as part of a pre-gentrification phase to attract real estate interest and drive speculation. As the news of new area developments and marketing strategies spread throughout the week, more information was spread about the emerging situation in South Chicago and South Shore. A study by the Urban Displacement Project provided a map that showed the extent to which displacement, displacement was either occurring or areas were at risk in the city of Chicago. The project showed areas in South Chicago and South Shore that were actively undergoing displacement. These include areas near the proposed marketing and housing plants near 89th and Commercial. The data also shows the risk to residents in the surrounding region where residents were susceptible to displacement and areas such as the Bush and South Shore near Rainbow Beach were specifically at risk of gentrification. The risk also extended into the parts of the East Side and Slag Valley where environmental leaders working with the Metropolitan Planning Council have been pushing plans for riverfront recreation and rezoning similar to El Paseo and Pilsen and the 606 Trail in Logan Square. For more information on current gentrification trends and to learn about risks of gentrification, stay tuned to our RISE social media channels. In other news, the struggles of a local woman have brought attention to a growing threat from online puppy scammers. Charisma Cannon from South Shore, like many area residents, have been searching for pets using online resources to fit specific needs. Due to medical conditions, Charisma could only have a certain type of dog, and through online research learned that Havanese puppies would be a perfect match. She found a Havanese puppy from an online website named Jet that she fell in love with and contacted the breeder about adopting. After filling out an online form, they asked her for a $350 deposit to Western Union, which she reluctantly sent. However, after sending the money, the breeder disappeared and never responded to her again. Charisma's case is not unique, and the Better Business Bureau reports that they have received over 4,300 reports of scams in 2020 alone, resulting in estimated loss for people of $3,100,000. However, the actual numbers are expected to be much higher. People are warned to be careful of online purchases of pets and don't consider making any pet purchases unless they have a chance to see the pet in person. In other news, on Saturday, the southeast side of Chicago Food Pantry held a pop-up food drive at St. Francis de Sales on the east side. The group provided donations of fresh produce to area residents. The group, which is supported by the Greater Chicago Food Depository, runs a food pantry located on 11401 South Green Bay Avenue in Chicago every Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and hosts a mobile pantry in various area locations from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. every third Friday of the month. And finally, just a few quick announcements. First, the Office of Chicago's 10th Ward Alderwoman, Susan Salowski Garza, will be hosting a back-to-school party. The event will take place on Saturday, August 14th at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. COVID vaccines will be offered along with activities for children and school supplies will be given away. The Chicago Sky Volleyball Club will be holding tryouts during the week. Tryouts will be held Tuesday, July 20th, Wednesday the 21st, and Thursday the 22nd between 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Southland Center located at 10 Southland Drive in Linwood. There's a $20 fee and participants are asked to bring water and knee pads. For more information, you can contact Coach Carlos at 773-573-9493. For those looking for job opportunities, the Whiting Family YMCA is hiring. The Y is looking for a lifeguard and swim instructor, along with other positions. Evenings and daytime availability are sought for this position. This and other positions at the Y can be found at crymca.org slash jobs. And that ends our weekly review for July 12th through July 19th, 2021. Thank you for joining us for this Week in Review. Peace. Welcome to the generation of gentrification Where border patrol is now modern day segregation Mass assassinations from weapons with registrations And still got the nerve to swear with one united nation The irony to tell me to go back to where I came from Born a US citizen but treated like I ain't one Don't know my lineage but they can tell I ain't dumb Know my history is way richer than just a slave son My blood is African, a product of greed And human trafficking from free labor Establishing a country on a land that was stolen The thought alone is bad so these records isn't all I'm making sure I'm mastering If never taught, you're not expected to know Hard to envision if you've never seen it before